Guys, as you can see, we've had to retreat into the workshop today. So I'm going to do a couple of uh, product reviews and we're going to put together a nucleus hive that we bought from our friends over at Barnyard Bees. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you this is the um, Guardian Beetle uh, hive entrance. Uh, beetle resistant hive entrance and what it is is it's a piece of plastic that you actually screw onto an entrance reducer your typical entrance reducer is going to be anywhere from two to three inches so a lot of them you're going to have to do what I did here and um, simply all I did was took a uh, skill saw and set my depth here to match uh, the depth that's already there and just did multiple back and forth passes and then came along with a um, you could do it with a flathead screwdriver or with a chisel and chiseled out the rest of the uh, space here to match the space of the uh, Guardian uh, hive entrance here and the way that the Guardian works is it sits on your bottom board here and creates a seal that the beetles can't get up under and then beetles can't hover like a bee can so your bees come and they land on here and they crawl in there well a beetle can't do that a beetle has to hit the side or hit the bottom board and then crawl over here well the way that this is designed is they cannot crawl in here without first either crawling around this lip on the outside or trying to go through this this honeycomb design here which they just fall through now this isn't going to provide a 100 percent uh, fort knox beehive um, what it's going to do is it's going to aid what bees are there to keep those beetles out because it's going to slow your beetles down if you use this style entrance reducer with a nice quality um, brood box and nice quality supers that don't have gaps in them you're gonna get probably a 99 percent hive beetle reduction and your bees are going to be able to take care of any other hive beetles that do manage to get into the hive so I would highly recommend this product it's about ten dollars plus shipping uh, shipping's not going to be very much on this if you just order it by itself Highly recommend this. We're going to, I've seen tons and tons of great reviews on this product. We're going to try it out here. Um, as, if you've been watching my videos, uh, I just recently lost a hive to hive beetles. Um, so we're going to test this out. Um, I do have a, a low hive beetle number right now. I've killed out most of my hive beetles so that I can detect. Um, but we're going to keep this on there just to prevent them from coming back. So we'll be doing some videos on this uh, throughout the uh, rest of the, the year into the uh, winter time here um, when our hive beetles are most prevalent. So uh, the other thing is this part right here is also removable. If you want to take that entrance and open it back up to a regular sized entrance without the actual guardian mechanism on it it just slides uh, onto the plastic housing right here just like that so you do have the option to open this back up without having to sit there and mess with the screws and unscrewing this and everything and it's this little lip here with with the the actual guardian device detached uh, provides a little bit of a rain shield for your entrance so that's kind of a, a neat uh, side feature to this product so you saw how easy that was to disassemble and then put back on there so setting that aside you might be wondering what the hammer is for I have a hammer and uh, a couple of screwdrivers there 
I don't think I need the screwdrivers. Um, all I need is a hammer uh, and some wood glue. I'm not going to use the wood glue. Wood glue has got a, depending on what brand you buy, has some pretty nasty chemicals in it. The bees are going to seal up any cracks in the wood anyway with propolis. So I'm not going to worry about the wood glue. The wood glue is also probably uh, there for mechanical strength more than anything. Um, I just don't want to risk getting uh, wood glue near my bees. So we're just going to use the the 7D nails there. There's 16 7, 7 D nails. And this is going to be the uh, nucleus hive kit from Barnyard Bees. So it's going to come with uh, your ends. It's going to come with your bottom board. Your sides. And these are all really good. These are what, uh, half to three quarter pine. Good solid stuff. Move some of the packaging out of the way. There's your nails. There's your top board with a escape hole. And your and your top. It's a metal line top place. And has a little thank you note on here. It says, uh, thank you for purchasing the telescoping outer cover. We have included a protective coating on the aluminum. Please remove before installation. They, these guys don't want their uh, product to uh, be damaged in shipping, get all scratched up. So there's a, a protective film on this aluminum top cover. So pretty good craftsmanship. We've got some pretty heavy gauge uh, staples in it. And we're back to that nice pine wood. And looks, looks pretty good to me. So we'll get started with the assembly process. Your lid is obviously already pre-assembled. As is your inner lid, your inner cover. Already assembled. What you have to put together mostly is the, the hive box itself. So, and here's the, uh, the box that came in. It's a double wall corrugated cardboard box, typical shipping box. Like I said, it comes with your uh, 16 nails and you just pick which side you want be the outside there. I like this side a little bit better. It's got a little bit better wood grain in it. And I like that. I like those sides. Comes with your full instructions there. Even comes with the little two inch tape measure. So it says plywood glue to lap joints prior to installation. This is a lap joint. The joint that goes around here. So you're going to install this handle up, obviously, and we're going to put three nails in each side of the lap joint. What I'm going to use here is I'm going to use the bottom board as a template. just what what to do there what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it on the on the bottom board so that it's together and square I'm going to get my one of my nails out here
gonna start a nail first. Keep it from knocking that down. I'm gonna start a nail. I'm gonna go ahead and start another nail here, just so that we're to determine that if you edge up the top and the bottom right there you're going to be pretty good all right there's my first nail just checking it and then we're going to do our second nail here So we've got a nice square joint, it's flat on the top, flat on the bottom. And go ahead and put our third nail in the center here. Just going to take our third nail. I'm just doing these uh, maybe a quarter, quarter inch in from the side. we go we haven't broken through the inside or anything they give us nice nice thick pieces of wood to work with here and then we're just going to repeat the same for the other side this is the side I wanted to be my outside so we're just going to set it up here square it up good I'm going to start with one in the center there. And yeah, don't don't miss and put a dent in your box. And I'm going to try to keep them about even. It's about an inch and a half, two inches from the top. Nail number two. If you get any twisting or bowing, what you can do is start your nail and then pull that side in and hold it with your hand and then nail it. See how flush, how nice and flush that is now? Alright, so we're going to flip it over and then the same thing to the other side. Take note that you want your top where your frame is going to rest to be the top on both sides. So I've got my top right here and my top right here. Once again, just so that I can see everything lining up, I'm going to start my nail in the middle. Squeeze together. Nail it. Then on this end, because I don't want this other end to, to come apart, I'm going to go ahead and put a single nail in this side as well. Line everything up. Hold it with my hand. Get the nail started. Squeeze together. And do any fine tuning as I go along. This side looks about perfect. I'm going to go ahead and nail it. Don't do that. Getting ahead of myself here. Alright, so this side's out a little bit at the bottom here. So I'm just going to start the nail. I'm going to take it, I'm going to push it in, squeeze, and now it's lined up perfect. Just so I can see it better, I'm going to flip this side around. The top's out a little bit. This is unfinished pine, and this is pretty straight. 
all things considered, this is pretty darn grade A wood right here. pretty darn square. That matches up almost perfectly. All right, so we've used 12 nails here, three, six, nine, and 12. And they give you some extras, just in case you're not, is not a, as good with your hammer and your nails as I am. And I'm not that good, so. But you do have four extras that it comes with. These could be used on another project. We're going to put them over there, and then we're going to see how well this uh, hive cover works for us. The hive cover like it was made for it. And then our top. And there's your nucleus hive. Your five frame nuke. Now this is uh, a relatively easy project. We just did it here in one video. And as you can tell, you can paint this, or you could uh, choose to put some spar varnish on it. I would, uh, I would not varnish or paint the bottom board here, the center of your bottom board. But along your outsides here, you could varnish that or paint it. Either way, a lot, a popular option that a lot of beekeepers are using these days is wood burning your registration numbers in the sides of your beehives. Here in the state of Florida, you're required to register with the Department of Agriculture if you're going to beekeep. I may do that in a future video, but for now, probably just paint my numbers on this box. Well, I'm glad you took the time to do this project with us. You can find more information about this product at barnyardbees.com. And this project uh, was less, less than $100. I think it was right at, actually it was less than 50 for this five frame nuke unassembled. So. Don't be afraid to put your own nucleus or even your own hive parts together. It's not that difficult, and most of the time the only tools you need is a hammer. So, thanks again for joining H&H &H Farms with a product review.